Good evening, troopers. Mighty Mike. Glad you guys came to join me again. Uh, today we're going to be working on our some com combinations for the feet kicking. Um, this workout is inspired by my best friend, one of my top students, my wife, Lori. Um, she has been geeking martial arts with me since 1990. Um, I'm a martial art instructor and when I first came out to this area from Woodbridge, Virginia, she was already a student in the school. We developed a really good friendship, uh, started dating, and married and had two wonderful kids. Great family. Um, one of the things that, that I always did as a young martial artist coming up is watch. I would always sit ringside and watch all the action that was going on in the adult division with the black belts. And of course, during this time, I'm just a teenager and an underbelt, but um, just watching the, the black belts perform, which is so cool. Their skill level was just so high. It was almost like watching, you know, an action film just going to the martial art tournament. So I always made sure that after I finished the division, I was always ringside. And I got my black belt when I was 15 years old and uh, decided uh, to take the path of becoming a martial art instructor. And... <clears throat> I was working for one of the greatest uh, fighters in the world, a guy by the name of Ibrahim Abdallah. Most people know him as Ibi. And during the time that I was with him, I met the woman who's now my wife. And um, we started dating. And, you know, with the dating as a martial artist, um, we were also doing training together. So a lot of times what happened at the end of the class is uh, it would be me, Master Abdallah, and uh, Lori, who is, is now uh, Mrs. Tall. And um, we would always talk about who the top fighters were at that time. Um, we ha would have videos of their performances all the time, and, and we would study and we would talk about the things that, that they did and what was significant as far as what they did when they were in the ring. So <clears throat> and in time, my, my uh, wife actually became a big fan and there were certain things that she was actually picking up um, that I was missing. I was just so enamored and excited about it. But some of the intricacies, even though I was her instructor, there were some things that she was picking up. And it's funny that sometimes we would come home and have dinner at night after class. And we would just be talking about the different fighters and the things that um, made their fight style so significant. Um, both of us being short. Um, we understood that it was very important that if we did not have a strong defense or a counter fight, we we're going to be best uh, best suited to, to just go offensive, just let your opponent come forward. Or I'm sorry, we would come forward to our opponent and make them basically deal with what we you know, had as far as our arsenal was concerned. So um, there's some combinations that actually the wife... Uh, Lori inspired. Uh, these are some of the combinations that we fired back in the day. Some of the top fighters were using them as well. We're going to explain to you why they work so well. Um, the first one is going to be our front leg side kick followed by the back leg round kick. Now, the side kick, of course, is the most powerful kick in all systems in the martial arts. Of course, the Taekwondo is the most powerful because it involves a chamber over the front knee and a pivot off the back foot, which means that you get a lot of power from, from the, your legs delivered into that kick. So off the side kick, what we're going to do is we're going to follow up with the back leg round kick. So the idea is that I don't want to power shot the side kick. If I kick my opponent too hard, I knock him out the ring, and then I'm not in range to be able to follow up with my combinations with the hands or either with the back leg. So what I want to do is I want to use it as, as a ruler, as a measuring tool, and also to get my opponent's attention. So it's what we call a poke side kick. Okay, so the poke side kick is, is, is here where I slide in and I just pop it nice and soft. Notice that I barely touched it. If I kick it as hard as I can, I knock my opponent too far out of range to be able to follow up with the second kick. So from this position here, I'm going to slide in. I'm on my toes. I'm going to slide in. From here, I work the kick. Boom, I tap. Then from this position, I follow up immediately. Round kick to the body. So I have him engage with what's going on in the front to the point that when I throw the roundhouse kick, that split second, they're still preparing for another technique coming straight ahead, and I follow up with the back leg to the, to the body. Okay, 
So that's one combination. So checking my list, the next combination we're going to work is going to be a front leg side kick followed by a back axe kick. Now the axe kick, we've talked about it several times, I actually have actually uh, taught it and we've seen it, we've uh, explained trajectory, it's the motion of chopping wood with an axe. So I bring it up on an angle, then when I get to the top, that is where I want to drop the kick down. So from this position here, we're thinking about using that lead leg side kick to set up that back leg, just like a boxer uses a jab to set up the cross. I'm going to pop that front leg, get their attention, then follow up, back leg axe kick. Okay, so our next combination we're going to work is going to be the axe kick off the lead leg followed by back leg axe kick. So with the back leg axe kick, we have two different variations. We can throw what we call an in to out axe kick, which is when I turn my hip and shoulder, the knee comes up on an angle and drops right down the center. Or if I can throw it from the opposite direction, a lot of times, this is a really confusing angle. Most fighters expect that crescent kick whip action on the axe. What they don't expect is the one to come from the rear and drop down. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna work a front leg side kick as a setup, then the back leg axe kick is gonna be the follow up. And five. So <clears throat> our next one, we're going to use a side kick and we're going to use spin side kick or reverse side. So what I'm thinking is once I drop that axe, first of all, the eyes are going to be up for a split second. I drop. My opponent's eye is working this way and then following the drop. When they come down following the drop, that's probably going to be a time they're going to be thinking about trying to, to counter that movement, to actually attack. The, what we're going to do is slow them down a little bit. It's worth a reverse side kick. So here, I shoot the lead leg axe. Then from right here, turn the side kick. All right? So here, this position, I can bait and fake, axe kick, turn the side. combinations right there work very well because it doesn't allow your opponent to get relaxed. They're used to, especially once you've established your reputation, they're going to be used to seeing more, more than one technique coming. The thing that works in your favor is you can, stretch, you can switch them up. You don't have to throw the same combinations over and over again. But the idea, most people are more intimidated by the legs than they are from the punches, especially once you establish your power. So the thing is, is that if we can throw combinations with the legs, here it helps us a little bit easier to set up those hand techniques. Or if you just want to throw kicks, that's fine. Just make sure that your distance is tight enough. The farther you start away from it, the easier it's going to be for you to tire out trying to get there. If you start too close, you're jammed up. There's no way that you can pick up your leg to throw the kick. So I want you to practice these combinations. I want you to communicate with me. Let me know how these drills are feeling. If they're feeling a little bit awkward, go ahead and hit me up with a message. Tell me what your concerns are and I can coach you. So remember how to contact me. It's pimagathersburg at gmail.com. That's P-I-M-A-G-A-I-T-H-E-R-S-B-U-R-S. 
RG, Pima Gaithersburg at gmail.com. Or because this is on Facebook, what you can do is just go ahead and hit me up with a message on Facebook. And that way we can communicate. I can answer any questions that you guys have. Uh, one of my biggest objectives with this is to be able to start doing private lessons and seminars. It's been my passion for my life. I've actually had people say that when I'm teaching my classes, it's like being in a seminar. I try to give as much information as I can because let's face it, sparring is a scary thing for some people to do. And even once you've been experienced, it can still be a little bit scary. So what we're trying to do is trying to get our, ourselves, you know, when I say ourselves, you know, I'm touching my chest too, me, trying to get us in a position where we are exposed to so much education from multiple sources. The reason I say multiple sources is sometimes you can be with someone, especially your teacher, your master instructor, and your master instructor can say things to you, but because you've been with them for such a long time, sometimes you take things for granted. It goes in one ear and out the other. But if you get a chance to train with somebody else, that person nine times out of 10 is saying what your master is saying as well. So that, that what that does is it reinforces. Make sure that those messages that you're getting are sinking right in there, okay? So thank you as always for spending the time with me. You wanna make sure you're practicing those combinations when you fire them. You wanna fire them with good commitment, trying to hit, you don't wanna telegraph. You wanna make sure that one kick is followed up immediately by another kick. All right, so thanks for sharing your time with me. Guys, have a great night.